Be fruitful and multiply. Last December, I got involved with an NGO's work involving identification of some troubled kids through the school system, reaching out to these kids and their parents to provide some support, food and school needs for the immediate empowerment for the longer run, and in between, counseling both the kids and their parents. I followed a small group to three of the families. COVID prevention protocols were duly observed. Um, there was a common denominator to the three families. Too many children than the family could cater for. The first family lived in an uncompleted building surrounded by bush. Ordinarily, um, if I did not visit the place and was just told that someone lived there, I would assume that the resident must be a mental health patient. The family head had no stable means of livelihood, while the wife does some petty trading, you, you know the trader money kind of uh, target, um, you need to see the shock on my face. When the children started to march out, they were 10. I learned nine were siblings and one in was inherited from a late sister. They were poor, very poor. Um, it was similar with the two other families, uh, Orbit, uh, not with many children, not with as many children as the, as the first one, but with glaringly much more children than they could cater for. The part that wasn't so obvious in the day of the visit was serial domestic abuse of the wives and children by the fathers. But over the few weeks of the counselors working with these families, the abuse situations have come to the fore. The more I get to know about my society, the more I know that I don't know much. Before these encounters, I could have said rather ignorantly that a Southwest family living in Lagos will not contemplate nine children, and that it is something that you will find in the North. How wrong I was. Having said that, though, it is glaring that the problem is a much bigger menace in the North than what we have in the South. Even a security guard from that part of town in one of my former employments said he had over 20 children with a 40,000 per month salary. He lived in Lagos for 11 months of the year, and I just wonder how he was raising 20 children back in Kano. When I think about this experience, about this experience and I situate it with the promise of government to pull out 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years, Without specific policies in the direction of population management, it appears government just like the sound of promises with no sincere desire to make them come to pass. Social welfare, trader money, and other conditional cash transfer programs are helpful, but they will not be enough to put people out of poverty. Modern economic planning is highly integrated, and a plan to pull 100 million out of poverty Without population planning is a huge joke. As population continues to grow faster than the economy, and we are producing more people with no education or skills, the poverty circle will actually continue to expand rather than shrink. I wish to advocate that we must take the issue of population planning much more serious. We don't even know for sure how close or far from reality is our population estimate. If we're going to pull 100 million people out of poverty, a start point is to know how many people are even in Nigeria. It appears we have just been multiplying without being fruitful. Nigeria is due for a census. Mm. Mm. Nigeria was due for a census in 2016 because since 1966 we have had a census conducted every 10 years. Yes. But in 2016, President Buhari said we didn't have the funds. And I'm not sure that they've planned since five years, you know, to have a census done. Maybe they do not realize the importance of it in terms of planning for health care and education. Or maybe they realize the expansion. And, oh. and, and maybe we should ask government how they come by our budgets and income capital per head For when the last census conducted was 2006. in the 2006. So how do they really, what is the economic plan of Nigeria? No, are we planning? They have politicized. Or we are just, uh, we have, um, 
a Bureau of Statistics. Exactly. So, so just so adding figures. Bureau of Statistics, I mean, so what they do projection. is from 2006. Every year, uh, they just project. Don't forget uh, that the foundation from which they are even projecting is flawed. It's all those uh, politicized well, numbers. Uh, where Professor Wallace Schoenka once said that um, the, the Nigerian budget, um, that people, that the Nigerian budget were guesstimates, as we're Isn't guessing it? the it estimates. <laughs> Um, and so everything about Nigeria is guesstimated. So when are we going um, to stop that so, guesstimation? So <laughs> um, we we'll say estimate population of Lagos. Last year you estimate to 15 million. million. Now you have estimated 20 to 15, 20 million. Next year we we'll estimate to 25 million. Every year you just add 5, 5 million. And so, but when you want to plan, just tell the people what they want to hear. We'll pull 200 million. These are statements made during campaigns. God and bless you, sir. After, after election, when you, you dare confront them with such statement, it's either they tell you it was not from them but their party, uh -huh. or that you are a detractor. Full stop. That you're trying to derail them from the focus now that they have. We don't even know the number of people living below poverty level. Is this... We don't even know the number of people, the number of workers we have in Nigeria. We don't know the number of students. We don't know the number of children that are born daily. So how do you now plan? Pathetic, how really? can you how be, do you plan? What are you planning? How can planning? you be this fruitful? Is, this is annoying. We are just so multiplying. We are just multiplying. You see, 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 as you are saying, this is annoying we're me so much. We're multiplying. We're not sure whether we're fruitful even. It's, it's annoying me so we're much fruitful. because... It's annoying me so much because I think that with the level of poverty that there is in Nigeria, government million. should have a complete vertical impetus, proper accounting process for the citizens, for the economy, for the resources, for Rabbi, everything Rabbi that we have. And then bring it to the fore. Uh, 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 what, what exactly are we, are we doing as a country? Nothing, yeah. sir. What exactly, uh, like, like, you, like, yeah. like you said, who, who, are, who are these people representing? Nothing. Is it us or them? I don't understand. Nothing vertical <laughs> or horizontal. Perpendicular. Is all, no, neither is it perpendicularly <laughs> impetuously. The only Ever thing vexed. here is they will tell you that there is no money. Always no money and always but borrowing. But government cut, will not cut But I have enemies. a question yeah. before we round off. How do you, as a parent... Create 20, 25 children. Even if you are a farmer. Procreate. And you can feed all of them from your farm. Um, do How do care. you educate them? Even do if your education care. is informal, that is passing on care. your One own. One thing you don't understand. They don't educate them. For that the is the reality. Do you from care? You are lucky. You are lucky <clears throat> that you are educated and you are from where you are from, your parents. There are some people, they will tell you child children is from God. Yes, biological Don't. accident. So yeah. they are from God. They come, they should come. Secondly, your cultural practice, religious practice, yes. Polygamy. all of these are in the mix. So they don't care. They will tell you and God, highly the children they, they, they. will come with whatever they will so eat. So whose responsibility is it to change our mindset? Some will tell you, imagine a child telling the, you... The, it the, is, it's, it's not the, the government's responsibility, The government though. has a role. It is. The there are family role. planning issues. Education. Have, there are campaigns in and China awareness. And it's, 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 in it's, China, there's a plan on ground for, okay, the, um, for tail population. The, the, the advocate okay. is uh, better with your participation. Uh, it is now time to share some of your viewpoints on the issues discussed here. Responding to the advocacy on corruption as Kong Chopo, I am Uche Chow says, all talk and no action. Nigerians must learn to be proactive in calling a spade a spade until we have people that can say things the way they are and call things what they are without fear of the bad people in government coming after them. On the advocacy on the arrest of peaceful protesters, Chris, Chris Bay 2021 says, why don't you call journalists push for obedience? Why don't you so-called journalists push for obedience? You talk about Nigerian constitution. How about bylaws? You also use the word massacre at the Lekki Gate. I'm utterly disappointed in you. For your interest, Lekki Gate is above one man. You guys are targeting. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate ng after the break liberos is pointing out a new form of colonization in nigeria